Rebuilding a major American city. When it comes to the damage that Harvey has ravaged on Texas, the numbers are staggering. More than 43,000 homes in the greater Houston area are damaged or completely lost. More than 47,000 on the coast of Texas are damaged. 18,841 people as of Wednesday are now living in shelters just in the Houston area. Rebuilding homes, businesses, infrastructure, more could cost more than $125 billion to make Houston whole again. Joining me now are Jason Meister, Senior Director of the Ackman Ziff Real Estate Group and Collingwood Group Managing Director and former Fannie Mae Executive Tom Booker. Tom, to begin with you, as the cleanup begins, what are the challenges for homeowners? The challenges for homeowners are substantial. Um, you know, in the largest city in the nation, every homeowner has got to figure out a way first to find a place to live. And, and many of the folks in Houston have had, to be, have had to do that for over a week. But when you look at trying to rebuild, let's look at what the size of that market is. Houston is the second fastest growing market in the country, fourth largest city. They have about 25,000 housing starts. With the numbers you just rattled off, that equals about 90,000 properties in the Houston metro that are damaged. Now, at full tilt, that market typically can do about 25,000 new homes. So we're talking about four times the number of new homes that need to be built or addressed. And it sounds like a four-year backlog to begin with. So mm -hmm. I would say the first thing that uh, people in Houston are have to deal with is a little bit of patience. And Jason, we, we've reported this before. Many small businesses go out of business that they can never recover. What are the challenges of, of those business owners? Yeah, I mean, retail has already been uh, destroyed by, by online retailers. So this storm is going to amplify those problems. The commercial real estate market, which is the small business owners and the larger business owners, there's 12,000 properties, 455 million square feet of, of commercial real estate that's been flooded. But what, what the good, there's some good news. Houston is above sea level, so it'll drain better than like Louisiana, for example. And we are, we did find out that uh, the couple of the ports, I think the ports are trying to, to reopen, um, mm -hmm. the Port of Houston, for example, I think is trying to begin mm -hmm. reopening today. That's going to be critical, Tom, to getting supplies into the region, you know, supplies for those retailers. But in terms of homeowners, um, what are some of, the, some of the troubles that they're going to face that we might not be seeing right now as we rebuild down in Houston, whether it's supplies, whether it's just manpower, to because you have to replace, if your home is flooded even partially, all of that drywall has to come out because of the potential for mold. Well, you hit, you hit it. Um, you know, the wonderful thing is the rain has stopped. The challenge is in Houston, the heat comes. And frankly, we're only about a month into the hurricane season, so there's two months more of risk associated with living in Houston. Um, but homeowner, homeowners are really going to face a really interesting challenge. About 90% of homeowners in Houston are on uh, public water and sewer. So one of the challenges is when the area floods, the port of public water and sewer backs up. And so you have real challenges actually just clearing the space. So there are going to be a number of areas that are going to remain flooded for a significant amount of time. And just getting back to the properties is going to be the number one challenge. But for those who can, they may not have water for quite some time. Jason, what about some silver linings for homeowners, business owners? Yeah, look, I think half of the property that's in this flood zone is out of the FEMA. So the uninsured is, the big, is probably one of the biggest problems. Also, finding the skilled workers, the electricians, the contractors, that's going to be really difficult. The uninsured in terms of just, uh, flood insurance in particular. That's right. That uh, there, uh, I think it's even a majority of properties yeah. in the Houston area do not, do not even have flood insurance, and that's why, uh, Mike, I would uh, would think that you, that's why with Governor Abbott's initial mm -hmm. assessment of the funding that's that true. wouldn't be needed from the federal level is so high at 125 billion dollars, because that would be in excess of what was provided for Hurricane Katrina. The co yeah, the commercial real estate alone is 50, they, they estimate it's going to be 55 billion dollars of damage. So that's it's a whopping number. Uh, Jason, looking for silver linings, I remember having conversations with the uh, chief executive and CFO of a sporting goods company that's based in that area of the country after similar disasters. And they reported seeing a spike in traffic and sales, surprisingly. And the way they assessed it was they said, well, people needed new socks. 
Right. And it's, it's, it's kind of a crazy story. <laughs> it is a true story, though. And um, <laughs> that's actually what happened. It's true. Do you, I mean, yeah. do you think we're going to see situations like that, whether sure. it's in food, retail, anything look, like I that? I think if you look at Home Depot and Lowe's, you know, yeah. Yeah. any kind of home repair uh, company, they're going to do well. And by the way, people aren't going on Amazon while they're in a flood zone. So they're going to go to the store. They're going to buy that, the, right. the wood or the paint or the whatever they need. So I think those, those, those retailers will do well. Tom, I'm going to give you the final word. Well, I tell you, one of the things that's really bullish about Houston is there, there are 23 Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered there. There is a major set of capabilities in, in terms of the youth and demography of Houston. It's one of the youngest cities in the nation. And between corporations pitching in and having a vibrant young population in an area that's got a tremendous amount of spirit, um, I just don't see them being down for long. Amen to that. Amen to that. Tom Booker, thank you so much for being here. Jason Meister, good to see both of you gentlemen. Uh, the good news. And thank you. Uh, again, we've just seen uh, individuals come together.